Welcome to Southern Morocco, home to the stunning landscapes of the Todra Valley and the dramatic Todra Gorge. In this video, we'll explore the fossil-rich region of Athud, where millions of years of Earth's history are preserved in stone. Next, we'll uncover the Katara, ingenious underground irrigation systems that have sustained communities for centuries. And finally, we'll journey through the Todra Valley's lush oasis and its breathtaking gorge, a natural wonder carved by time. We are Chris and Lydia. Join us as we explore Morocco's incredible landscapes and the stories hidden within them. In our last episode, we spent a memorable evening at a luxury Sahara desert camp, enjoying delicious food and dancing the night away to the joyful rhythms of local Ganawa musicians. It may not have been 100% authentic, but it was still lots of fun. Even our beautiful camels shared the experience, resting under the desert stars alongside our tents. This morning our gentle companions carried us back across the golden sand dunes, now perfectly untouched, with all trace of yesterday's footsteps swept away by the desert winds. After saying our heartfelt goodbyes to our newfound camel friends, it was time to leave Mazuga behind and head north again across the vast barren desert plains. Today we'll be heading northwest to the stunning Todra Valley, nestled between the towering High Atlas Mountains to the north and the rugged Anti Atlas Mountains to the south. Along the way we'll make a few stops, starting with the small oasis town of Erthud, located just an hour's drive north of the sand dunes. Erthud is a relatively young town, established just over 100 years ago during the French Protectorate as an administrative hub. Today it's best known for its high quality date cultivation, the main source of livelihood for the locals. However, when we arrived, it wasn't dates that were being traded, it was livestock, especially sheep taking centre stage in the market square. Major dates, I know those. Might as well try some dates while we're here in a food. Seeing it's uh, famous for its dates. Can we try these? Are these? Okay. No, no, no. They're quite nice. I'm not a big date person, really, but yeah, quite nice. Are they two different flavors, or another type? They're a different type. That's um, it's a lighter color one. So what are these ones? I like the major ones best, I think. Hmm. 
well as dates. The food is famous for its fossils, well they sell a lot of fossils here anyway. The Sahara used to be a seabed, so there's lots of fossils being found here over the years. We're going to do a little bit of a tour and hear all about it and then we'll go to the shop and I don't know whether I'll buy any, they're just really for decoration. Also the kind of fossils which inside the blocks, for example, the around one. That it is goniatite. Goniatite, it is like ammonites. You have heard about the ammonites? Yeah. Like snails. Yeah. Yeah. You know, snail or escargot. Yes, 360 million. How they decide in the edges, you know, they're using carbon dating. Please, this one here, the long one, that it is calamari or squid. But please. This one, it is the ancestor of the squid, yeah. not existing anymore similar to that. And we call it Orthoceras, that's the geological mind. Orthoceras. Well, it was an interesting tour on how they find the fossils in the sedimentary rocks. And there's a big showroom, lots of stonework with fossils in it. So you like a souvenir or some little bit of furniture, <laughs> tabletop or a fountain or a sink, then you can certainly get them here with fossils in them. A few kilometres west of Erthud, we passed by rows of ancient wells, equally spaced holes stretching across the desert plains. These wells are part of a traditional underground irrigation system, hundreds of years old, known as Katara. Each desert community would dig a string of wells, stretching from the water table in the mountains to their distant farmlands. Every family in the village was required to dedicate a male member to help hand dig a well. If a family didn't contribute, they wouldn't share in the water supply. Once the wells were dug, they were connected by an underground tunnel. These tunnels were designed with a gentle downward slope, allowing water to flow naturally by gravity to the village. In addition to their role in digging the tunnels, the wells served other important functions. They provided ventilation to keep the water oxygenated and allowed easy access for maintenance. If the tunnels became blocked with sand, the villagers could check the water flow at each well to pinpoint the blockage and then clear it through the wells. By keeping the water underground, the Katara system protected it from evaporation in the harsh desert climate. We're going down into the irrigation system now. So this used to be filled with water. It's pretty amazing that back in ancient times, in the 14th century, this is how people got their water in the Sahara. 
It's hot up top, but it's nice and cool down here. This is as far as we're allowed to go. Don't want to get lost down here. It's estimated that there's more than a thousand Katara in Morocco. Unfortunately, over the past century, the water table has been in decline due to the increased use of modern pumping methods, ongoing drought, and the growing population's demand for water. As a result, Many Katara, like this one, have dried up, yet some are still in operation today. In our previous video, when we visited the Sahara, we explored the endpoint of an active Katara, which continues to irrigate the oasis in Mazuga. <laughs> As we drove along the barren plain between the High Atlas and the Anti Atlas Mountains, I was struck by how dry and seemingly inhospitable the land was. And then, all of a sudden, we reached the Todra River and the ancient town of Tingir. Tingir is like a green jewel in the desert. It's amazing how, in the midst of such an arid landscape, life can suddenly flourish. Thanks to the Todra River, this region has supported communities for centuries. The river not only irrigates the land, but also sustains one of the most famous oases in Morocco. In Tingir, agriculture thrives. Farmers grow date palms, figs and grains using the river's water and traditional irrigation systems like the Katara to keep their crops alive in this otherwise harsh environment. As we drove through Tingir, Another striking feature came into view, the crumbling mud brick kasbahs and kazars scattered across the landscape. Many of these structures were abandoned during the last century when a large proportion of Tingir's Jewish population left Morocco, leaving behind homes, entire neighbourhoods and a unique cultural legacy that is slowly fading into the desert. Just beyond Tingir lies one of Morocco's most breathtaking natural wonders, the Todra Gorge. Carved by the Todra River, this canyon features towering cliffs that rise up to 300 metres on each side, with the river winding its way through the narrow gap. The Todra Gorge is a popular destination for both hikers and rock climbers, but for today we're opting for a leisurely stroll to take in its awesome beauty. Welcome to Todra Gorge. This is absolutely magnificent. Check out the scale of this place. It's incredible. It's the scenic drive through here has just been phenomenal. I wish we were actually staying here. I think if we were to come back again, I would try and stay here because it's just serene and beautiful and green and lush. And yeah, you definitely have to put this on your list if you're coming to Morocco. It's pretty special. Well, we're going for a bit of a hike along the gorge. Just a short one, but the scenery is amazing, so even a short walk should fill us with lots of moments. This is only the start of it. <laughs>
look at the rock formation there. No. Yeah, just look at how the the diagonal angles of the rocks have been pushed up. I don't know how I would feel staying there. In that hotel yeah. behind you? Yeah. I, I want to stay here, but I'm like, mm, this is kind of avalanche territory, surely. Yeah, it's well, we heard a story, fall. didn't we? Of, there was a big rock that fell on a building, and then they. It was a hotel, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, but I think. Um, Maybe it was this one, I don't know, but that still doesn't look real safe. No. <laughs> yes, this is definitely the hotel that the rock fell on. The avalanche that Lydia was talking about. There's a rock there, right on top of part of the hotel. Goodness, you wouldn't have wanted to be staying there. Well, we've reached the end of the gorge. At least our little track. Uh, it was just the road basically walking along the river, but it was... Uh, very picturesque. And it's a lot cooler, thank goodness, because yeah. it's been so hot today. But yeah. in this valley way, it's a lot cooler and in shade. And if you want to buy shirts or scarves or blankets, there's plenty of vendors around. <laughs> I'm going to go for a swing. It's so inviting. There's our bus. As the afternoon shadows lengthened, we drove back through the Todra Valley to continue our journey westward. Next stop, the incredible Dades Valley. We'd like to thank everyone who's been sending us such beautiful and informative comments. It really does mean a lot to us that you're enjoying our videos, and if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our channel, as it really does help us out, and we don't want you to miss our next episode. Please check out our other Morocco videos and we hope you come roving with the bellies again next time. Bye for now.